Ever have a class of children disappear every single day? As a teacher, I have dealt with a lot of things in a classroom. Maybe a child gets ill. Maybe a kid gets a nosebleed. Maybe you'll get bombarded with an army of paper planes. But the current class I teach has a very odd and consistent habit of slowly dying off every day and then coming back the next like nothing happened. The typical day goes as follows. All 22 kids arrive. No, 20, because kid 22 passed away in their sleep. I know from the hysterical sobbing call I get on the phone every day. And kid 21 gets ran over by one of the morning bosses. 20 kids arrive at homeroom and we stand up to do the Pledge of Allegiance. At the line, and justice for all, a rogue hunter's bullet from the woods strikes kid 20 through the skull. There is no shock from the kids, and I have long since become desensitized to this routine. So, we get on with our morning reading. Kid 19 volunteers to read a section. They slip up and the other kids laugh. Filled with shame and embarrassment, Kid 19 stabs themselves repeatedly with a number 2 pencil. And as soon as we finish the story, a bookshelf of heavy books falls over and crushes Kid 18 to a pile of blood, bone and tissue. Before you know it, it's recess time and four more kids vanish. Kid 17 is mauled to death by rabbit squirrels. Kid 16 asphyxiates on a tetherball rope. Kid 15 falls out of a tree face first onto a fairly sizable rock. Kid 14 gets lost in the woods, never to be seen again. Hold recess inside, they say, but it doesn't matter where recess is held, those kids will always die. During indoor recess, Kid 17 has a fatal seizure after consuming toxic paint. Kid 16 asphyxiates with a jump rope. Kid 15 pretends to be King Kong until they trip and impale themselves on some sort of toy. And Kid 14 asks to go to the bathroom and is never heard from again. Recess ends and math class begins. Kid 13 sees a bird outside the window and excitedly runs over to it, but trips and falls out of said window. Kid 12 sneezes so hard they bash their face into their desk causing their nose bone to break off and go into their brain. Kid 11 gets electrocuted from a pencil sharpener. Kid 10 complains of a stomach ache. Almost instantly afterwards, they explode, covering the rest of the class in their innards. Again, there is no shock from the students, and by that point in the day, it's time for lunch. Kid 9 chokes to death on a sandwich, Kid 8's milk carton is filled with bleach. Kid 7 has a lethal allergic reaction. Kid 6 slips into a deep fryer. Kid 5 mistakes rat poison for loose sweets. Eventually, lunch ends with only 4 kids left for our last class of the day, which, depending on the day of the week, is either science or social studies. But that isn't important, nor does it matter. One of the kids throws a paper airplane, which pierces Kid 4 through the eye and into their brain. Kid 3 accidentally cuts their arm off in a paper cutter. And Kid 2 can take the pressure of being one of the final two and has a brain aneurysm. This leaves little Kid 1 at the end of the day. They leave school with no problems whatsoever. No catastrophes, no surprises. They get in their mother's car and drive home with no issues. It's not until I'm home later in the day that I get that damned news broadcast on my TV. A man in a drug-induced rage broke into a family's home, killing everyone in the house with a rifle. Amongst the victims were a husband and wife and their child. And the child was Kid One. No matter what I do, the cycle will continue again and again and again. Many readers of this may chalk me up as unsympathetic based on the ways I describe this situation. But truthfully, that's as far from reality as one could go.
It's painful to watch all of my students go out in such cartoonishly horrid ways. I could hardly sleep the first seven times I got stuck in the cycle. And after that, my grief for the children never went away. I just got tired. I can't really imagine anyone being anything other than tired after seeing children die every single day with no way to help them and with nobody out there to actually help do something about it for the past few months. I've just gotten exhausted from this curse, to the point where all I can really do is wait and see if it will actually stop. Dear God, I hope it does.